It's called confirmation, or uh, and it's also baptism. Sometimes we call it profession of faith. And part of the reason we do this is because of those words on the screen, making the faith my faith. So it's a bit faint there. but And the idea with that is that faith is something that you can't inherit. Okay, so you can inherit property. You can inherit you know, clothes, gems, knickknacks, money, whatever, but you can't inherit faith. So just because you were born into a certain family, that will help you. Uh, just because you've grown, gone to church as a young person, that doesn't necessarily mean you're a disciple of Jesus. So what we like to do is we have this process called confirmation or profession of faith where uh, some of our young people, if they're the, kind of the right age, they uh, come to classes with me, uh, three, uh, three classes, and we've, we've completed those, and we talk about what it means to make the faith, meaning Christianity, my faith. You know, is this just something that, you know, someone else believes, or my parents or my grandparents believe, or is it something that I believe myself? And so we get together and we talk about, you know, Christianity and how it relates to some other world religions. We talk about uh, what makes uh, Christianity unique and what makes Jesus unique. Uh, we talk about what it means to uh, be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world. And uh, we do all sorts of things in the process of that, including some fun and snacks, of course, because you always got to have fun and snacks. Um, but one of the verses that we look at together is Matthew 16. And so shortly, I'll, I'm going to invite uh, some of our young people forward to make their uh, faith statements. And each faith statement begins, I believe that Jesus is the Messiah the son of the living God, I want to be a member of his church because. Now, the reason we do that is because of uh, this passage from Matthew 16, which we discussed in our uh, groups together in December. So uh, this is Peter and the disciples and Jesus. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the son of man is? And the son of man is Jesus. That's his most frequent uh, title for himself. They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. So Messiah means anointed one, God's chosen king and representative on the earth, right? This is a fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies about a coming Messiah, king, a son of the living God. And then this is what we say, what we hear. Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, meaning humans didn't reveal this to you. But my, my Father in heaven, this is divine wisdom, this is from God. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Isn't that powerful? So the church is founded on the insight of who Jesus is, that he is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. That's the basis, right? And so when you know young people affirm their faith and profess their faith, and some come forward for baptism, uh, what they're doing is they're claiming that faith as their own, um, not only to have a saving faith and they claim and inherit the promises of salvation, of eternity, of heaven, of hope, of all these wonderful things, uh, but also become a, a full member in his church, what we call a professing member. And so how it will work is I will invite them up one by one, and some have, well, they've all prepared faith statements, and they'll share them from up here. Um, some have been baptized previously, and so for those people, I'm, after they have make their faith statements, I will have them kneel down, and I will anoint them with oil, and uh, Julie and I will pray over them. Uh, and then we're going to give them a gift, and we're going to sing. So there'll be a little bit of singing between each one. And also, now I know that the, the weather's a bit crazy, so uh, Sanjay, I don't believe, is here this morning. Um, uh, they live in Aurelia. So also Sanjay's been recovering from a pretty significant illness. So he's on the mend. He's almost there, but he wasn't able to be here this morning. So he will baptize in a few weeks and or whenever he's here. And also Jonah as well. He had a whole bunch of family members coming. Um, but last night it was decided probably not best to have a whole bunch of family drive up from London. So uh, we're going to uh, baptize Jonah very shortly as well. Um, so I'm gonna about to start that. You can follow along with things on the screen. But I just want to pray first, okay? Let's pray. Because let me tell you, uh, getting up in front of uh, people and just saying a faith statement is a big deal, right? And it can be a bit nerve-wracking. Um, I get nervous every Sunday, by the way. I've told you that before. <laughs> yeah, it still happens. But anyway, let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you for your goodness and for the salvation that you give to us, the faith that you give to us. And Lord, we just pray that you are with these young people now as they come up and uh, make their statements and as we confirm 
uh, their baptism as we affirm them uh, in, in who you have made them to be. Give them courage, give them faithfulness, give them peacefulness in their hearts. These things we ask and pray in the name of Christ, who is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Amen. All right, so I'm going to invite Sam up first to make his faith statement. Come on up, Sam. I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, and I want to be the be a part of this church because I want to feel cleansed and, I'm, and feel certain that I am with, with the Lord in the church. All right, thank you for that great, honest statement. Let's give a round of applause. Thank you. They've been encouraged to make statements that they think about, something that they feel honest about, and uh, that is really meaningful to them. And so after each time, we're probably going to give some applause to God's glory uh, and as a thank you. So how will you have a meal here? Brother Sam, I anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray together. Lord God, I thank you for this, your child, Sam Renner. Lord, you have given him a saving faith. Lord, in these moments, we pray that you fill him with the powerful gift of your Holy Spirit and that you grow him into a godly man, a pillar of faithfulness. Lord, we ask these things uh, for your glory in the name of Christ, our Savior. Let's sing together. There is love that came for us, humble to a sinner's cross. You broke my shame and sinfulness. You rose again victorious. You are stronger Next, Sierra, come on up. I believe Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. I want to be a member of his church because in my life, every step of the way, whenever I had any kind of difficulty that I had to overcome, I pray to God, and God gives me what I need, but not always what I want. God gives me the strength, heart, and intelligence to overcome whatever obstacles I have to overcome. Being part of a church will strengthen my relationship with God. Mm, wonderful. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful words. Wonderful words. Sierra. Sister Sierra, I anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your daughter, Sierra. We thank you for the love that you have for her. You made her. You called her to yourself. And so we pray, Lord, that you feel her powerfully with your Holy Spirit. Lord, surround her and continue with her on her journey as she grows, as she matures as a disciple of Jesus Christ, sharing your love and goodness with the world. These things we ask and pray in his powerful name. Amen. Let's sing. <laughs> Wonderful, Sarah, you're next. Come on up. Thank you. <laughs> My 
name is Sarah Tan, and I believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, because what is the probability of one man filling all the prophecies about the Messiah? To help you understand that statement, here's an illustration. Imagine filling Texas with coins. You color one coin red, the rest are silver. You blindfold a man and send him in to, out to pick one. He wanders days and days. Finally, he stops and pick up, picks up one coin, the red one. This illustration is the same as Jesus fulfilling just eight of the many prophecies. And I want to be a member of his church because you always have someone to look out for you. When you feel upset, you don't just have your parents to turn to. And when you need someone to when you need to talk to someone, you can tell God because he is with you 24-7. Now, if you look at a Christian, they try to be happy and welcoming, kind and generous all the time. The reason they are like that is simple. It's because they have someone to turn to, talk to, share their emotions with, happiness, sadness, anger, and even excitement. And that is why I would love to be a member of his church and why I believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Good job, Sarah. <laughs> Wonderful. Sister Sarah, I anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your daughter, Sarah. We thank you for the woman you have made her to be, and the woman you are making her to be. Fill her powerfully with the gift of your Holy Spirit, so that as she continues to journey, she will continue to call upon you and grow in faithfulness, in love, and in truth. These things we pray in the powerful name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sing. <laughs> Jacqueline forward. Bring forward Jacqueline. I believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. I want to be a member of his church because all my life I've been going to a church and a Christian school, so I've been surrounded by people who believe in Christ. I want to continue to be surrounded by a group of believers who can help me learn more about God, and in return, I hope to encourage others to strengthen their faith. My family began attending this church about five years ago, and in that time, I've attended Sunday school, VBS, and I love going to youth group. I want to grow up with my friends that I've made here and hope that we can support each other as we grow up and learn more about the Bible. By giving this faith statement, I want to prove that I trust God to protect me and take care of me for the rest of my life. Mm, thank you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Over here, Jacqueline. Uh, we're going to celebrate also the sacrament of baptism for Jacqueline this morning. And we do so in fulfillment of Jesus' command. And this is engraved uh, on the top of the baptismal font. Uh, in the words from Matthew 28, uh, 18 to 20, Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And remember to teach them everything I have commanded you, and I am with you always to the end of the age.
Jacqueline, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord God above, we thank you so incredibly much for your daughter, Jacqueline. Lord, we pray that you fill Jacqueline with the gift of your Holy Spirit. Lord, you have been calling her forward to yourself from a very young age. Even from before she was born, we thank you for the ways that you have nurtured her faith. Continue to grow her as a godly young woman that she can listen to you and lean on you as a part of the hands and feet of Christ for the healing of the world. These things we ask and pray in Jesus' incredible and wonderful name. Amen. Let's sing. All right, Jamie, come on forward. Where's Jamie? There she is. I believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. I want to be a member of his church because I would like to grow in my faith with God and be Jesus' hands and feet. Westminster feels like home to me and was extremely welcoming when I first came. I have grown so much closer to God already because of the amazing teachers and awesome friends. Thank you. Praise God. Good job. <laughs> Sorry, it's a bit wet. Sorry. <laughs> Sister Jamie, I anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your goodness that you have shown in this, your daughter, Jamie. Lord, we pray boldly that you pour out your Holy Spirit in Jamie, that you surround herself, you surround her with your presence, that you fill her with your powerful presence so that she can, as she has said, continue to be the hands and feet of our Lord Jesus. As she grows, continue to cultivate her as a godly woman, someone who is eager and willing to turn to you for wisdom and to respond in discipleship. These things we ask and pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's keep singing.
I uh, just want to share just a few thoughts um, just before the ushers come around um, related to what we've done. First of all, I just want to say great job uh, to the five people who uh, profess their faith this morning. Didn't they do a wonderful job? That was a great, honest faith statement. So wonderful. Really good, really good. That's not easy to do. Um, but I want to offer us a few reflections for you who've shared your faith statements and for all of us uh, based on this idea of Christian uh, integrity. So Christian integrity is character consistency. And the reason I wanted to say that today is because uh, integrity is really um, to do with your character, and it's wanting to be really the same person in all situations, have a consistent in who you are, in your faithfulness, in your godliness. That's something that we all want to cultivate, right? And the way I define it is it's character consistency. And so um, although we all have bad days, although we all mess up uh, a fair amount, uh, I had a couple of those days last week, so I, you know, it's fresh in my mind. So it doesn't mean we're perfect, but we are trying through prayer and through Scripture uh, and through leaning on God's people through worship, we are trying to be disciples of Jesus in all situations. So that's what I mean by character consistency. And I want to highlight three facets of that in the three words. It has to do with your thoughts, your words, and your actions. All right, so if we want to be consistent, and if we want to grow as disciples of Jesus who've made this commitment to him, well, these are three things we need to keep in mind. So first, your thought world. How can we think in a way that honors God? How can we think in a way that honors Jesus and what he has taught us? And really, this is kind of probably the most difficult battle that I think a lot of people face, right? Because, you know, our thoughts, we just have them to ourselves. But how can we bring our thoughts in line uh, with godliness? That's one thing. The second thing is words. So thoughts translate into the words that you say, right, as you go about and living your life. And that's a big part of what our young people did today and what Sanjay and, and Jonah will do uh, in a couple weeks, maybe next week or a couple weeks from now, is, is verbalizing those godly thoughts and those things we want to be salt and light for Christ. And we actually stand in Reformed Protestant uh, Christians, stand in, uh, it's called a confessional uh, tradition, meaning we confess our faith. We say it out publicly. So it's not just something we think, it actually translates into our words and how that impacts our lives. And we know this, right, because so many of the important things we do are structured like this, to confess before God and his people. So when we confess our faith among God's people. Another example is uh, on marriage. You know, when a man and a woman come up here and they make vows under God in the midst of his people, right, that's kind of a part of that confessional tradition. At the same time, when we ordain or induct elders or do these types of things, we do it under God and with God's people. So it's the words that we say. Uh, someone once told me, and I can't remember who, but sometimes you don't know what you believe until you say it. So that helps you clarify what you believe. You don't know what you believe until you actually say it. And then finally, actions. So if we're trying to bring our thoughts uh, into godly integrity and then our words, too, and confessing these uh, things that we believe and, and that impacts us, also we want to be the hands and feet of Jesus in our actions. And I think that's important because we live in a time where there is this pressure where religion or your faith or spirituality, God, everything, it should just be a private thing. You should never really talk about it. You should never really, no one else should know that's totally inconsistent with the wholeness uh, of our faith that we are called to in the Bible, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. That's not a private thing. That's a very public thing. So thoughts, words, and actions. And so my hope for our uh, young people, five people who profess their faith this morning, did a great job at it. I appreciated their honest words. Um, and my prayer for all of us, really, is as we try to mature and grow in our discipleship, no matter where we are at, we can think through character consistency, thoughts, words, actions as the hands and feet of Jesus. Let's pray. Lord God, we do thank you so very, very much for these faith statements that were offered. Uh, with, we're just so great this morning. We thank you for those. Uh, we thank you that you've called these young people to yourself uh, in a saving relationship. And Lord, we continue to ask that you guide them and nurture them as they journey through life, as they seek what their own spiritual gifts are, as they seek to be the hands and feet of Jesus, as we all seek to be the hands and feet of Jesus, calling upon your wisdom and being a part of your hope in a world that needs your hope so desperately much. Do this for our thoughts. Do this for our words and our actions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.